My name is Eli Reed, and I have been a Magnum photographer since 1983. Well, there's sort of a connection with uh, the work I was doing in movies. There's a fellow crew member in the camera department. Uh, that he wanted to do a film on the Lost Boys of Sudan. And uh, he asked me if I would come with them and uh, document, uh, you know, picture with pictures. Uh, basically, it's going to be used for marketing. I thought it was for a good cause, you know, things they were going through. Anytime I get a chance to go to Africa, I want to go. I feel like I have one section of time, two weeks in the camp, and then uh, four or five days with each uh, two different groups in the United States. There's a picture that's um, where the kids are just jumping all over the place, right? And there's uh, these kids had kicked a soccer ball into a tree, and they're trying to figure out how to get up into that tree to get the soccer ball back. And so I'm taking some photographs of that and just relaxing you, letting the things unfold. Then all of a sudden, here's these kids coming around a corner. They're doing this craziness. They weren't doing it for me. They were doing it for themselves. And in, the, in that moment, they were like kids anywhere else in the world in spite of what they've gone through. Some of the things they went through were so horrendous. I mean, you know, they're lucky to be alive and to, just to get to that camp. But they still had that burst of uh, enthusiasm that, that you have when you're a child. Uh, there's this one, one kid. He's wearing a hat. He kept his stuff clean no matter what, and it's dusty. And it was just an a indication of a number of the lost boys of having a certain kind of quiet fortitude because they've gone through so much, you know, because a lot of them were, were, were you know, tending the sheep when the gunshots ran out and somebody ran to them, run for it, and they're killing everybody. And they had to run, just boom, just go. And going through rivers, some of them drowned. They went through hell, and yet there's a certain calmness. They weren't just jumping around. You know, change. You know, going to the place. I mean, you know, everybody thinks they're going through hell. Yeah, you, everybody has a certain kind of level, different level of hell they go through. But they went to real, serious, life-threatening hell, and they got to the camp, and even that could be a little bit hairy. So uh, I had a healthy respect for the calm. One of the most important pictures I took to me was early the next morning when we got to Pittsburgh, the first place, and so lost boy. Woke up, he was like sort of in his room, in the room, he's looking out the window. What lies out there? As far as I'm concerned, this is an ongoing story. This is not like done by any stretch of the imagination. Anybody who says it is, obviously is not paying attention or doesn't know. If you don't see something, it never happened. You know, if the people hadn't documented what happened in the Holocaust, you know, those people still will try to tell you it never happened. Because if you know something happens, then you're, you're sort of obligated someplace inside you to deal with, deal with it, to do something about it. I, I hope that people will look at the pictures and whatever else comes out of there with a, with a very intelligent eye. The awareness. If there's no awareness of what's going on, people can get away with a lot of stuff. Bad people can get away with a lot of stuff. I, I think it's easier to me go into war zone because... You know, you do what you can do. Some days you might decide, I'm going to be crazy today and take unnecessary chances because I think this is the day to do it. And when you're teaching students, it's more challenging because everybody's had, you know, different ideas or they're still not quite formed yet. And it's the most exciting thing. So it always gives me a kick to see my students work to know I push them beyond what they, they uh, would, could expect of themselves. That makes me happy. As I tell them, you, you guys got to remember... Guys and gals, you're the elites. You know, everybody else thinks they're Leonardo da Vinci, but you guys have the possibility of being Leonardo da Vinci because you've been trained by, you know, the, these people in the school and to, to, to be smart about things and to really look into yourself. I'm not just taking it as a, as a, as a job. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a commitment to life, you know.